Gigabyte's X299 motherboard lineup features a range of options with support for Intel's Core X series CPUs. Boards like the Aorus X299 Gaming 7 are packed with useful features and support Optane memory, Thunderbolt 3, and USB 3.1 Gen 2. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is gonna be about this case right here, the Cooler Master Half H500P. The Half Series stands for high airflow, and Cooler Master, uh, they kind of set the standard for case design back in the 2000s with the Half Series. If, if you wanna know how far back this goes, when Half first came out, like a painted interior on a case was a premium feature. It wasn't like every case had painted interiors. Some of the earlier half cases actually didn't have painted interiors, but they have a whole lineup of them that they launched and then it sort of petered off for a while, but they're bringing it back. This is the H500P. It's got two massive 200 millimeter RGB fans at the front. So I'm just gonna build a system in this case today and I'm going to let you guys know how it goes and maybe give you some feedback towards the end of this video. So in order to build a system, I should probably have some parts to put inside. Uh, one second. These, gotta have memory. So let's keep it real with some Cooler Master stuff. Uh, I got the Ma Master Air MA610P air cooler with RGB lights compatible with uh, all of the different Asus Aura, ASRock RGB LED, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, and MSI Mystic lighting. All compatible with that right there. Uh, Cooler Master, the standby V650 uh, power supply. Nice all black uh, cabling on this one. Corsair Vengeance LED RGB memory, a 16 gig, two by eight gig set. For the CPU, you're gonna go with the Intel 8700K. Uh, the new CPU, that's part of their Coffee Lake lineup. Uh, really good overclocker on this one, six cores and 12 threads. And um, there is some excitement about Intel actually bringing higher core counts to their mainstream lineup. So might as well drop in the 8700K. For some storage, since this already has Windows 10 installed on it, I have the Samsung 960 Pro NVMe SSD, 512 gig, which brings me to graphics card and motherboard. Asus actually sent me some stuff recently. So I was thinking, I'm pretty sure I know what's in here. Let's, let's go with this graphics card, the uh, Asus Strix uh, Radeon RX Vega edition. So the uh, custom Asus version of the RX Vega 64. And they said they said they're gonna send me a Z370 motherboard too, so. This is the ROG Strix Z370-I gaming motherboard, which I'm sure is a very good motherboard because uh, you know Asus ROG, they do a good, de good job with it. Um, it is mini ITX though. Who cares? Let's just go for it. Let's go for it. There are my parts. Let's put this build together. All right, so getting the H500P out of the box, first impressions, uh, it's a really, really nice looking case. Uh, you know, when it comes to aesthetic things like, you know, the shape of the vents and everything on the side, it can be hit or miss depending on a manufacturer's intent and where they go with it. This, I don't know, I just like it. I, I think it looks pretty clean, somewhat industrial, kind of futuristic looking, I guess, but um, more specific to the specs. Uh, this is a tempered glass side panel piece right here. Uh, it's got a single screw in the middle uh, and that you need to position this way to keep it closed and then there's a latch. You can uh, pop that open and then the side panel will just kind of fall uh, open or fall part, part way open, not all the way off. And then you can lift it off the hinge. Uh, works pretty good. For IO up on top, we have a headphone and microphone jack, a couple USB 3.0 and a couple USB 2.0 ports. You got a reset button right there, hard drive activity, activity light. And then there's, these appear to be two lights on either side. These aren't buttons. So I'm not sure if those just light up RGB like the rest of the case or what. And then of course, power button dead center. I'm getting to the point with cases where I'm gonna start complaining that there's no USB type C. I'd love to see a USB type C plug up here. And if it connected to a USB 3.1 gen two port in the back, uh, all the better as well. 
Um, now apart from the tempered glass, there are two plastic pieces, sort of slightly smoky plastic here on the front from top to bottom, as well as going across the top. There's ventilation along the top up here. It's very wide and there's plenty of space between the plastic and the fans as well. And of course, all the ventilation going in the sides um, that will provide a little bit of filtration as well as air gets pulled into the case by those two big fans. All right, so discovered that our Vengeance RGB memory is going to conflict with this cooler and the cooler is already installed, so the memory is gonna be the easiest thing to swap out. So Corsair, I promise, I'll be using your Vengeance RGB memory in something nice very soon. For the time being, we're sticking with the tried and true standard, the Vengeance LPX low profile, which is gonna give us plenty of clearance there for that cooler. And the cooler has RGB LEDs on it. And it's got a little lead coming off of it with just a little four pin plug, which I may or may not have already shown you guys. So the, the, the CPU cooler has a little four pin plug and so the motherboard has a single RGB LED header, but it's the fancy new one that's digital. So a little three pin digital connector, which is really cool if you have addressable digital uh, RGB LEDs because there's a lot of fancy effects you can do with those that you can't with the normal ones. But I cannot just plug that into that, it will not work. So. I'm going to be going with plan B option. And again, all of this could be easily like done away with by just going with a full size ATX motherboard that has more room for the memory and more uh, RGB LED headers on it. Uh, my Asus Strix uh, X299 board, for example, has this header as well as the four pin headers. But anyway, um, our, our Cooler Master Master Air MA610P cooler does come with a little control unit though, with just a Molex plug. So we're going to plug into that so we can at least have the LEDs going on this unit. So here is our half broken down uh, with all the modular parts removed, at least as far as I can tell. And uh, I wanted to show you a few more of the features right now. One is this crazy uh, rail system that they have going on the top. It is centered uh, and actually this piece, this entire piece can be removed as well uh, with the screws that you can see like here and here. So you could remove that to install your radiators if you wanted to before reinstalling that. That's a very convenient thing. And also as you can probably see, see a crazy amount of support for uh, 120 millimeter or uh, 140 millimeter based fans in uh, three or I believe three or four fan configurations depending on which size fan you are using so that's pretty cool. Uh, there is a similar configuration although you can't remove the piece at the front for the radiator but um, tons of support up here for radiators as well in two fan configurations. You might notice a drive cage down at the bottom so if you do have 3.5 inch drives you can pop them in there. It is on the, this uh, rail system that allows you to slide the drives out. However, do note that the drives are sliding out forward here. I'd be interested if you could uh, flip that around possibly to be able to slide them out the back because these pieces are the modular pieces that came off. This one here was on the left side and it's got a couple 2.5 inch drive mounts on top and then this one here was on the right side. Uh, there's also these metal panels right here and those are basically cable protection uh, routing panels. So there's one that goes right here that uh, prevents you from seeing any of the stuff back there if you're running cables from the front. And then this uh, wider panel also goes on the back behind it to hide the cable management area from the back or keep those in a little bit tidier. Now those are very convenient and nice to have for sure, but I do want to point out this large pile of screws right here. 
These are all the screws that I had to remove in order to get all of these panels off. Not a huge or insanely crazy amount, but do bear in mind, for example, that there really is no way to mount the power supply through the back of the case or mount the power supply even from this side of the case. It's pretty much closed in. So you need to pop that panel off in order to get your power supply in. There is a dust filter behind that, so that is good to have. But just something to keep in mind if you ever have the, I mean, people don't swap their power supplies very often, so it's probably not gonna be a huge issue, but I have had power supplies fail, and that would mean that you probably would have to potentially even remove your entire motherboard into a full system teardown in order to replace that, but that's a little bit of speculation there. Anyway, the upshot, of course, is that you get a crazy amount of modularity, so you can use these panels or not use them, depending on whether you like the look of them or not. Probably you will end up using them to hide a lot of those cables. And then these, it's nice to have them in two separate pieces. So you could, for instance, leave the front one off if you wanted more easy access to those drive cages. Uh, and the, this one you'll probably keep on most of the time because most people like to have that nice, clean power supply basement looking area. So the build's put together. It was a little weird because it's mini ATX and um, the power supply cable length was just barely enough to get to some of these locations. But overall, internally, uh, the build quality is fantastic. Uh, I like the layout. There's so much room to work with. We were not taking advantage of it at all because we were shoving everything up into a mini ATX form factor. Don't put a mini ATX motherboard in this case. The only reason I did it was because I only had two uh, Z370 motherboards and I already used the Gigabyte one, so I wanted to use the Asus one. Uh, anyway, uh, let's fire her up for the first time. Hopefully I did things right. Hey, I think that's good. Um, as long as it's got enough juice to turn those 200 millimeter fans in the front. It does, just barely. <laughs> so guys, here is the completed build, at least for now. Uh, 200 millimeter fans in the front, Joe and I have both noticed these are very quiet. Uh, one of the great advantages of 200 millimeter fans, one of the great reasons why I have been a fan of big fans haha, in the past. So i um, glad that they're there and they actually look really clean too. You can cycle through a bunch of different RGB effects and I am happy to say that wearing these front fans as well as the fans on my cooler together has allowed me to sync them all together. Now bear in mind that the motherboard, the uh, accent lights on the edge of the motherboard as well as the uh, graphics card are not synced up right now because we haven't loaded up into Aura Sync. Uh, and you would, if you use maybe a larger size motherboard that had the RGB out on it, of course, be able to connect all of these RGB LEDs together with the motherboard and sync everything up together. As it is, I've just been controlling it manually with that little units that's included. And I will say it's nice to have that because um, it means that if you don't necessarily have the RGB capabilities on the motherboard, you can at least set everything up and get it looking pretty and color matching and everything. Right now I have everything just going red because that's what the graphics card was defaulting to. So it matched a little bit better. Um, but as you can see with the side panel on, uh, you get a really nice view of everything inside, very unobstructed and very much uh, an indicator that again, Mini ITX in this case, makes no sense. There's so much more room for other activities and that kind of thing in there as well. Now I can't make any comments as far as actual thermal performance of this case because I'm not doing anything that I would call scientific testing today. Uh, I think most of my dilemmas with this build were just the fact that it was a mini ITX board. So most of the cable management routing holes that are over on the right here, I wasn't able to access for the bottom stuff down here. I have a bunch of stuff routed between the graphics card and the motherboard coming over right here and that's not ideal either but I was able to get everything in there and functional and up and running. Uh, there's also the ability to cycle through uh, some different effects that you can pop in there. 
I think that's what I did there. So there's flashing. There is sort of a fade that will fade a single color. Uh, you can also have it fade between different colors. This is what they had going on when they were demoing this at Computex, uh, which looks pretty cool. Um, also, these, these LEDs do a very nice sort of pinkish purple, um, which I think was pretty cool there as well. Uh, and then, of course, you can just flash between colors. I don't really like the flashing effects. I think they're too abrupt and not very pleasant. Uh, and then you have this one, which also appears to be a fading between different colors, but just a little bit faster. And then that's back to solid. And then uh, the other button will just let you cycle through colors. So you got blue, yellow, uh, a lighter blue, kind of turquoise-ish, a sort of pinkish purple, white, red, green, and back to blue. So there are the options. There's my first impressions, first look, first ever build in the Cooler Master H500P, the new launch of the half series. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, and let me know if you'd like to see a, another build in this, maybe one that I'm not just sort of throwing together with parts I have, but one that's actually purpose built with uh, a bit more thought behind what's going inside. Thank you guys so much for watching this video though. Of course, if you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button and we'll see you next time.